Brenda and Sam say they were both victimized by teachers who crossed an ethical line, teachers who took advantage of their youth and inexperience. But Fred is a former teacher who doesn't think student-teacher romances are morally wrong. He met his wife when she walked into his sixth grade math class, and he married her when she was 16. Now, this is a story that rocked the small Rhode Island town that you're from. It landed you in jail for a while. It cost you your job. It sounds incredibly sordid in many ways. What's the real story? When you first met this young woman, were you attracted to her? Not at all. There was no relationship between she and I when we were student and teacher. The relationship came years later. How many years later? Six years later. S okay, but you did marry her when she was how old? Seventeen. All right. Well, it's not much of a difference. All right, now, she was, she was a student in your class. And when she was in the sixth grade, yeah. And what did you think of her when she was a student? Oh, I had quite a bit of trouble with her. She was uh, bored on the unruly. She was difficult to handle. She was a class clown, always interesting in attention for the kids in the room. So she was a handful. Were you there was absolutely no relationship with her at that time. Okay, when did it start to blossom into a relationship? As she got older, she kept in contact with me and uh, came by and visited, like many, many other students that I had. And later, crises set in her life, and she had difficulty at home and so forth. And she was a potential runaway. She tried to run away twice. And when I categorized all the kids I had in school, she was probably the number one female, top academically, uh, top potential to succeed. And so I guess I kind of stuck my neck out because I was unwilling to see her go down the drain. So you're saying she was having trouble at home. What kind of trouble was she having? Difficulty with her parents. She was number one in her high school class, yet there was constant friction at home. Did you, what kind of friction? Uh, I don't really think I should. Uh, it was an abusive environment. And it just, I just want to leave it at that. It was an abusive environment. So you kind of took her under your wing, you became yes, an advisor right. to her? Right. I was also an advisor to her in the seventh grade. It's a school advised program, you know. And she left the school after the seventh grade. She no longer went to that school. And where did she go? She went to other schools, private schools. And how did your relationship, uh, you were in contact with her, but when did it start to take a romantic turn? When the pressure was at its maximum and she felt she had to run from home. And she tried that and did that and uh, was placed in a foster home by the state. And her foster parents took over from that point on. Then when she was removed from that foster home because the foster parents got her a driver's license because she had two jobs, she was doing very well in school and so forth, the foster parents had a disagreement with the state over the driver's license issue. They were gonna take her out of that foster home and so she ran. So and ultimately, they precipitated the run. And she ran where? State of Florida. And how did you two get together? Well, she contacted me from Florida, let me know where she uh, was. Well, she ran, okay, did she run to you? She ran to the state of Florida. To, she thought she had an uncle in a city in Florida. She knew I had an aunt there. She knew I had relatives there. So in some ways, she was trying to make contact with you. Oh, yeah. yeah. And what happened when she did? Well, I was concerned about what had happened to her. So I went to Florida to see her, to meet her. And I didn't, uh, I didn't like the lifestyle she was leading. What was wrong with it? Well, she had dropped out of school and she had a couple of jobs. And uh, I wasn't sure about the setting she was fitting into. So my second trip to Florida that year, I married her. All right. Now we jump from, we're in Florida, suddenly you're married to her? Mm. Suddenly she's a, she's a former student and, and now she's your wife. Right. It seems like an extreme way to try and, uh, I don't know, help somebody? What were you trying to do when you married Maybe her? Maybe only extreme because it's probably not heard of. There are probably thousands of cases that border on this, but nobody hears about them. Ours has received a lot of notoriety, so people uh, get an idea of the picture. But there are thousands and thousands and thousands of these cases where teachers and students are successfully married. but. All the news today is usually bad news. You seldom hear the good news. For example, I think it's over 70% of all college professors are married to former students or graduate students, which is a pretty hefty percentage. And I think most of those marriages are extremely successful. I know the divorce rate is quite low. All right, but, the, but there was a, sort of a hefty age difference between the two of you when you got married. What was it? 29 years. 
Well, that's a chronological age difference, folks. Okay. Uh, age is only a number. Is that exactly? What you're because she's she's extremely intelligent. Uh, in spite of the fact she only went to tenth grade and quit, she gained acceptance to the local university. She's always got top grades, and now she's a PhD candidate. All right. Well, did you did you love this woman, young woman, when you married her? I mean, you're making it sound like she's almost. I know. Love is one of those things that develops gradually. If you're crazy about someone, wow, I love that. That's not love. That's infatuation. I didn't have any idea how much I loved her until we got divorced. Then that's when I knew how much I loved no. her. And that is true of anyone, by the way. That is, in fact, if you talk to most people who are divorced, you'll find out that that is the truth. You never know the value of another person, as the song says, until you've lost that person. All right, I'm going to ask you to hold your place because I'm going to turn to Melanie, who's seated next to you, who also has uh, firsthand experience with a... He loved me. Anybody here think it's okay for a 16-year-old student to get involved with a 27-year-old teacher? Wait, I see one brave man. He's all the way in the back. I know. We're going to take a break. Let me just get to him. You think it's okay back there? Tell me why. Well, like she said, she was moving on to the university level, and so was he, and she's getting ready to make her own decision on life, live on dorm and that sort of thing. So I think it's fun. Yeah, I think it's fine. Okay. Ever happened to you? No. Oh, no. Okay, no. All right, well, we took a break in uh, Fred's story. We want to find out. You did go on to marry your former sixth grade uh, student, and we're going to find out what happened to your marriage and more of uh, Melanie's story when we come back. We'll be back. student-teacher relationships and we've been talking with Fred and Melanie and they were both involved in these sort of relationships. Fred is a teacher and Melanie is a student and we want to make it real clear the audience pointed this out during the break. The two of you were not involved. Fred's okay you're sure about this right Fred? Fred's like I don't know. Okay. I'm very sure. I'm All right. positive. Fred you married this student and um, clearly her parents didn't approve of this. Parents seldom approve of any marriages. Parents didn't approve my first marriage. I didn't approve of my second. I don't know if they've ever approved of any marriage. But her parents really didn't approve. Kimberly's parents. Well, she had constant friction with them. They didn't approve of anything she did or any boyfriend she had. They approved of no one. Now, how did the marriage go once you two were... Uh... We got along fine. But the public pressure was incessant. And it got to the point where we couldn't go anywhere without having people make snide remarks behind our backs or to our faces. Very few had the guts to talk to our face. Well, what were the snide comments about? The age difference or about the fact that you had been her former teacher? I never heard a big deal about the teacher-student thing. It was always the age difference. That was the focal point of most of these problems. Yet, most people aren't acquainted with history because age differences between people in the past have been enormous. In fact, I think the most extreme example I found is a man who was 80, married a girl 18. She was his student, incidentally, and he was a world-famous musician, so nobody dared to question it. All right, why it all depends where you are in the ladder of society, you know. Why didn't your marriage work out? Because they pounded away at us, which I could care about, but her, she was very sensitive to it. And she wanted to go to the university, and she was afraid down there that they would persecute her. Evidently, according to her, three professors intentionally mocked her low, and she challenged that, and her new hero came into the picture, her math prof, who challenged the mock from the other professor and brought it up to what it should have been. What's her new hero mean? Her new husband. <laughs> wait a minute, she le wait a minute, she left you a, a former math teacher for another math teacher? I guess my math only went so far. <laughs> she, are you serious? She, she went on to marry another math prof? I'm not a math prof, I was just a math teacher. He's a math professor. He's okay. a PhD in math. All right. Um, and, and looking back on this relationship, how do you feel about it? Hey, Sarah, Sarah. If a person's not happy with me, I can't expect them to be married to me. If you're not happy, you should not remain to be married. All right, except you also had a child. Yes, that's the only unfortunate thing. This affects the, the, the bad effect is on kids. If people pot, no problem. But when kids are involved, that is a problem. All right, you had something you wanted to say. I don't have a problem with your age. What I do have a problem is that you are a role model for students. That's what you are. Well, remember, I didn't marry her when I had her in class. I'm adamantly against that. I think, how can, a, how can a teacher or professor 
mock a student that they're having a relationship with and be fair to the other people in the class. Re Impossible. Regardless, Impossible. you are a role model. Yeah, and I, you I, are a role model. Exactly. You want to help her in that situation and, I agree. and then keep on walking. And I agree. And I think teachers are excellent husbands for most people they marry. They're stable, yeah, they have secure I, jobs. I, I, and they tend to be good Brooklyn people to stay next. out of trouble, you know? Right. So on a social scale, teachers rate pretty high. Right. And I think most students are lucky to marry them. All right. I just think uh, that you're being cynical and it's foolish. Uh, two things. One, pa many parents do approve of marriages in this country, okay? And the other thing is what it boils down to, it's illegal to be engaged with a relationship and eventual sex with a minor. And those, those, those laws were set up for okay. that purpose First to protect all, it's not people illegal. like this student. It's not illegal. The age of consent in this country is age 16, by the way. Okay? That's the law. That's oh! The statute. Maybe it should be raised. Maybe it should be raised. He's got to come oh. back for everything. The age of marriage is 18. The age of consent is 16, okay? Not that that applied to us, but those are the, those are the legal facts, okay? Uh, cynicism? That builds from experience. However, if people let us alone, and I just heard that there were extraneous factors from other people impinging on another relationship here, if people mind their own business and let people alone, they'd be a lot happier. Well, all right, Melanie, what, what is this about extraneous factors? I need a translator for well, him. Well, I, I, what he, what I was talking about when I'm talking about when there are families involved. All right, another But this break. shows society's hypocrisy because, you know, my, my ex-wife was number one in her class. Me too. Yet nobody wanted to mention her success. They only wanted to hop on her for what they considered to be her failure. So that is a hypocritical yeah. society. I can All agree right. with that point. That's okay. one of the only I agree points. on that. We're going to take another break. Next. You know, as far as an adult. Well, let me just check in here. With, I'm just curious. You don't, uh, law aside, this is a teacher who's teaching him at this point. Yeah. Bad news. It's oh, not, it's, wherever, wherever you establish a relationship with a pupil in your class, there's no way you can be objective and fair to the other people in the class. So that's, that's your why, only concern is objectivity? Absolutely, because as a teacher, you have to be objective. You all have right. to be fair to all people concerned. All right.